Hello and welcome to Box, where we on Box review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Hisense A7G 4K TV in 65 inches. With Hisense TVs becoming more of a household name, this 2021 model does offer you a substantial amount of features and impeccable quality. As a reasonably priced 4K model, it really stands out for its beautiful colours, sharp picture and brilliant compatibility at an affordable price point. Taking a quick look at the box here, you instantly see that you get UHD 4K quality along with some specific modes and a handful of picture enhancements like Dolby Vision and HDR. Opening the top of the box, the stand just sits inside. Lifting the main box away, you find the rest of the accessories including a remote, power cable, RCA lead and a few user manuals. The back of the TV has a nice look to it. I quite like this subtle grid pattern that gives a little more character. Of course, you'll also find a vase mount in the middle for mounting it on the wall, as well as a good amount of connections along the right to help connect you to all of your other devices. In terms of connections, you get two USBs, satellite and cable ports, three 2.0 HDMIs with one supporting eARC, an AV in, a service port, a 3.5mm headphone port, a composite interface slot, a digital audio out, and a LAN for Ethernet connection. It's even great to see that all of the HDMI ports support 4K input at 60Hz, ensuring that you get the best picture quality with your games console. Attaching the stand was a smooth process, as it's not particularly heavy, and slots into the bottom holding itself in place while I fix in the screws provided. I like the fact that it has two hidden channels on the back of the stand legs for tucking away any connecting wires for that nice clean finish. The caps are a little hard to remove, but once you've clipped them back into place, the end result looks pretty satisfying. Once powered up, it was time to get into the setup stage. Now it takes you through the usual steps, accepting terms and conditions, logging into your video account, and enabling any additional settings that you want to help enhance the sound and picture. It did take a few minutes, but once in, I was able to instantly start browsing the Freeview Play menu and start watching my favourite shows. Just taking a quick look at the overall design, it fits in very well into any environment thanks to the minimal style. With the stand being quite thin, it doesn't distract you from the picture and it holds the TV firmly in place with no worry of it toppling when knocked. The bezel around the screen is beautifully thin, really making the most of those full screen videos. It's not the thinnest TV that I've come across this year, but it doesn't take up much space on the stand and sits quite close to the wall despite the box on the back. The whole unit is surprisingly light, making it easy to manoeuvre and adjust the position without the worry of not being able to manage it. Now you do get a smart remote that comes with all the regular controls for basic functions, but I found that I use the hotkeys on the bottom the most, helping me navigate the various apps and streaming services for varied content. The free button does take you straight to the Vida dashboard, which is great for accessing a few of the free shows and movies if you don't subscribe to apps like Netflix. But in the main home menu, you do get Netflix and Prime Video, as well as all of your favourite British staples like BBC iPlayer, ITV Hub and Channel 4. From here, you can also access profiles, inputs and settings in the top left to quickly take control where needed. The settings menu is pretty in-depth. There's a wealth of picture controls from your average brightness and contrast sliders to the more in-depth picture modes and special features that really make this TV stand out. Now, the majority of the picture and sound settings are automatic, adapting to the content you watch in the background as you switch between content. But if you watch more movies rather than playing games, you can choose from a selection of picture modes best suited to the specific content, like movies and sports. It even has more super detailed modes that control motion, reduce noise and enhance the picture automatically to ensure that the picture is consistent throughout. I had most of these set to auto or default to give the best idea of the average picture quality, but it's brilliant to know that I can tailor the picture in any way possible to my own personal preferences. As with every new TV, it's always best practice to make sure that it's updated with the latest software. That way you know you're less likely to have any functionality faults and all features should be working at their best. So getting into the specifications on this display, you get an Ultra HD 3840 by 2160 4K resolution with a quantum dot backlight. It's completely compatible with all of your high quality picture enhancements like HDR and Dolby Vision, as well as having a nice wide 178 degree viewing angle to fully appreciate the full quality from all angles. So watching a variety of beauty shots, movies, game trailers and sports, I got a very good idea on how this display performs with various content. For movies, I set the picture to cinema mode in day or night depending on the light within the room, with the TV picking up HDR as it detected it and switching it to cinema HDR mode automatically. I felt the picture was well balanced, offering some really detailed colours and contrast, especially shining bright with 4K content. I did notice the picture was quite warm in certain scenes, so I altered the picture colour to standard to get more natural tones in faces and cooler tones in whites. 
Darker scenes did suffer a little in a bright room as the glare was pretty substantial, but it wasn't too much of an issue when altering the brightness or the light in the room slightly. When looking at the brightness, I got some impressive results from the default 50 brightness setting. In the brightness test, I even got as much as 4000 nits brightness, really putting out a bright picture even on both ends of extreme light and dark conditions. Even better, the display performed incredibly well when performing some basic light blooming and contrast tests, showing no sign of imperfections in the blacks when showing high contrast content, or watching dark shows with the subtitles on. This is largely down to the quantum dot backlight, giving out that consistently bright picture. However, I would still keep the picture brightness down low just to help with energy saving and prolonging picture life over the years. Overall, the colours stood out most here, especially in animated scenes. I was impressed with the sharp detail, even with older titles I watched. Now this is larger down to the 4K upscaling at work, which is a relief knowing that I can watch my old favourites and still manage a brilliant picture even with the 65 inch size. Now when it comes to sound, you get two 10 watt speakers that also support Dolby Atmos sound. The audio quality, though not incredible on the bass, had some serious power on the volume for projecting sound across the room with ease. Now you do get a good choice of sound modes here to help hone the sound to the right content. I felt they worked quite well, especially when trying to elevate cinema or sports sound, though considering this, you'd most likely want a more powerful sound system to help bring out the full potential of these modes. To give you an honest idea on the sound output, here's a small sound sample to show you the quality on offer here. As mentioned on the box, there is a game mode here for enhancing gameplay on your favourite console. I tried out a variety of game titles on the Xbox Series X to see how well it managed with next gen gameplay. Of course, as the HDMI ports are 2.0, you do only get a choice of 4K at 60Hz or 1080p at 120Hz. I played both, and depending on what I was playing, it was better to get the faster refresh rate with fast paced titles like Forza Horizon 4, as I got a much smoother picture when it mattered most. But for casual gaming, I want to enjoy those beautiful visuals as they were intended in full 4K despite the lower rates. But it's still great to see that with the game mode, I still get access to input enhancements like ALLM and VRR that greatly reduce the amount of lag and tearing, helping me play my best game no matter what. The game experience was pretty good despite the lack of high speed connection. I thought the picture quality really brought out the potential in those newer game titles and shining bright in those colour rich games like Apex Legends and Splitgate. So after using this TV for a few hours, I was pleasantly surprised by the quality on offer here. I really got that super sharp picture in 4K content and the upscaling tech worked nicely when enhancing some of my old favourite shows and movies. I love the vivid colours in animated movies, and even the beautifully natural tones in cinematic titles. It has a simple dashboard menu that helps me navigate the latest shows on offer, but also puts on a good selection of free content to enjoy any time. I even get access to some brilliant auto enhancements that work in the background to consistently bring me a high quality picture across all content I watch. I feel overall it's a great TV packed with potential, offering access to top level tech at an affordable price. So what do you think of the Hisense A7G? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.